Welcome to the second and last part of the analysis, in which I'll be analyzing the remaining stanzas and discussing different things, like the use of dashes, the appearance of the text, etc. Without further ado, let's continue from where we left off. Work, work, work. For once, there's an exclamation mark after the third work, perhaps showing the frustration with which the woman sings at this point. From weary chime to chime, work, 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 as prisoners work for crime. The use of the phrase chime to chime makes it seem as if the woman is drawing closer and closer to death with the ticking of the clock's needle, presumably synchronous with stitch, stitch, stitch. Through a simile, she compares herself to prisoners, making it known that the work she does is strenuous and that freedom has been snatched from her. This is certainly ironic since she committed no crime while the men are unjust to her by giving her such a meager salary. Band and gusset and seam, seam and gusset and band. She once more mentions three things and changes the order, making the reader go back to the second stanza where she first did this and create a mental list of all the things constantly circling her head. To be frank with you, I don't know what these things could represent. If you do have any theories, I'd love to read them. Carrying on, till the heart is sick and the brain benumbed, as well as the weary hand. The alliterative B in brain benumbed may tell us the woman is so tired and has been mechanized to the extent she does not have thoughts of her own. Her sick heart may reflect her lack of motivation to continue surviving, while her benumbed brain may reflect she has no strength to think optimistically. The never-ending laborious work has affected her to the very core. Work, work, work. In three consecutive stanzas, five to seven, the first line begins with the repetition of the word work, showing how it is a vital part of life and has to be included in all the places. In the dull December light. The alliteration in dull December creates a sense of doom, a very dismal tone, complementing the scenario. And work, 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 when the weather is warm and bright, while underneath the eaves the brooding swallows cling as if to show me their sunny backs and twit me with the spring. The repeated use of W is seen in most of the lines of the stanza, presumably reflecting the tone of resentment the woman sings with. It gives a sense of desperation and realization of the ugly truth. The woman develops a negative perception of nature, perhaps due to her jealousy towards the freedom of the swallows. The swallows may be symbolic of the rest of the society living in happiness, hinted through spring, while the woman always lives in dull December because of the living conditions her work has imposed upon her. The use of the word cling reminds one of the clothes that cling to one's body, once more relating the scenario to clothing imagery. Cling and brooding could have been used to show how the rich, inconsiderate people of the society remain in the woman's mind and irritate her because of their ungratefulness while she works so hard and does not complain. Oh, but to breathe the breath of the cowslip and primrose sweet, with the sky above my head and the grass beneath my feet. This stanza begins with the expression, oh, perhaps showing the woman's desperation and longing to get a bit of rest and beauty in her life. The alliterative B creates a plosive sound, allowing her bitterness to complement the longing with which she sings. She mentions two flowers, cowslip and primrose, so I pulled out the symbolisms of both flowers. You may notice both of them are symbolic of positives and negatives, they both symbolize death. So when the woman mentions these flowers, she may not only be wishing to have adventure and love in her life, but also wants to die at this point instead of working on and on. The natural, picturesque imagery develops a lighter, somewhat joyous mood to the poem, like a relief since the person listening to the song might need a moment to process all the pain and negativity and enter a world of beauty. For only one short hour to feel as I used to feel. She begs for one short hour to romanticize with the beautiful aspects of the world so that she could feel as she used to feel. There is an obvious sense of longing and misery for all these images contrast to her current position. Before I knew the woes of want and the walk that cost some meal. The mood of the stanza instantly changes from nostalgic longing to resentment as she returns to the present and uses the alliterative W 
These lines also make you realize the difference between want and need. You don't need a perfect home to survive. Just the slightest bit of warmth is enough, a broken chair, the crust of bread, they're all enough. You don't need a proper meal. The work that costs a meal could show you the lack of respect and appreciation society has for her that has led to such an insignificant return of favors for her hard work. Oh, but for one short hour. By this point, her desperation has carried on to the ninth stanza with the use of O oh and exclamation marks. A respite, however brief. With this line, you realize all along when you were thinking she isn't given any time off. It is more literal than you thought it to be. She says, however brief, meaning just a single minute will be more than enough for her exhausted self to regain a bit of strength. No blessed leisure for love or hope but only time for grief. She capitalizes the starting letters of love, hope, and grief. This may be to show how significant these emotions are in one's life, yet she has none of these positive elements to comfort her. You need a peace of mind for these things. While she's being tortured by pain and anguish, all she can turn towards is grief. A little weeping would ease my heart, but in the briny bed my tears must stop, for every drop hindles needle and thread. Weeping takes up time and strength, since it allows one to release built-up emotions, but the woman does not have time to weep, for that will cause difficulty in keeping up the pace of her work, resulting in a deduction of her wages. I assume she is one of those laborers who get daily wages. She cannot afford this deduction, considering all she has to keep herself alive is a crust of bread, so she does not have an option but to work like a slave. But no one listens to her. She seems to be singing out of the longing desperation to distract herself from the monstrosities and monotony of work. At the end of the stanza, you may see a quotation mark indicating the end of the song. No matter what era or place it is, the laborers' lives will always be like this, full of grief and sadness, having nothing at the end of the day. This ending may be chosen to make the reader feel guilty, for he or she may never have had considered the hardships and deaths involved in the process of making the shirt they wear. With fingers weary and worn, with eyelids heavy and red, a woman sat in unwomanly rags, plying her needle and thread. Stitch, 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 in poverty, hunger, and dirt, and still with the voice of dolorous pitch. Would that its tone could reach the rich. She sang this song of the shirt. The last stanza is the same as the first stanza with the exception of the underlined line. The additional line may be symbolic of the built-up frustration and desperation for a better life. This addition could also show the woman's direct hatred and resentment towards the rich. The repetition of the stanza may be a reminder the song is being narrated by another person. The woman herself isn't singing it to you, making you wonder what happened to her. Her song is still alive, but is she alive? Is the song the only thing that remains of her? This instance reminded me of a live performance of a highly poetic song you've probably heard. If you haven't, you definitely should, because you're missing out on a lot. It's by Poets of the Fall called Carnival of Rust. In their live performance, which, if I'm not mistaken, is from Moscow 2013, the singer gives an intro to the song through the lines down behind the gates of darkness dwell the man in the box, between heaven and hell, with his broken heart sings the song of love. The intro of the song creates the same effect given in the poem, Song of the Shirt. So, you are left wondering why you don't hear from the person themselves. Why do you hear from a third person? So if you haven't heard that song, do check it out, especially the music video. It's entirely symbolic. Every single thing in it needs to be analyzed. Someone made an insanely detailed analysis video on it which I'll link below in case you, like me, are clueless about what to make of the music video. Let's move on to a few more things you need to look into in order to conclude this analysis. In this poem, the persona talks about the exploitation of labor through this song which a woman sang. Hence, the persona gives a lack of journalism to the poem, making it seem universal and allowing readers to look into the lives of laborers in the textile industry symbolized by the woman. One thing you could say about all the dashes is that with every dash, the woman's misery seems to worsen. They give you time to think what she is thinking at all times. You may also comment on the appearance of the text, such as the different spacing at the beginning of every line of the poem makes the text seem like stitched up words, or something like that. Well, that's it for this analysis. If you found it helpful, do hit like to spread the video to more people. 
take care and see you next time.